Um, Matthew, that actually feeds right into the question I was going to ask you because you spoke about impact management uh, at the beginning. Can you give us some examples of how uh, sort of fourth sector activity, as it were, creative capitalism and so forth, is, is actually harnessing uh, public-private partnerships to uh, really achieve what you, what you mentioned, impact management, uh, to make sure, as Mary said, the dollars get to where they need to go? Well, let me, let me start. I'll stay in the global arena because I think that's where most is at stake at the moment. Um, I think if you had to look at the, the Bush years foreign policy, which I guess is not something anyone would want to do voluntarily, um, <laughs> you would uh, and ask what was good by America in that period. Everything that was good, in my view, came out of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Gates Foundation, the alliance with um, you know, sort of Bono's organization, um, you know, the creation of Millennium Challenge Corporation, President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, all those initiatives um, you know, came out of philanthropy and the, the, the sort of the global fund. Um, all those things are you know, very positive, I think, for, uh, for the world and you know, wouldn't have happened, I think, without the commitment of a number of the people I, we write about in the book. Um, you know, I, thinking about my day job, uh, writing about business and finance for The Economist, you know, what, we, what I and my colleagues are most struck by and most surprised by even more than the complete meltdown of the banking system is the extent to which globalization has gone into reverse. Um, and the, this is a moment where I think that is the greater priority of, of, of any around uh, reviving the economy at the moment. And you know, one of the things that's at stake is you know, what model of, of, of global society is going to triumph at the moment. There's a real battle. Um, I think that in places like Africa, until a year ago, the American model was kind of beginning to win. Um, and partly that was due to the, uh, the very effective philanthropy that was going in and the commitment of American business to invest in creating jobs. But it was happening at a, you know, at a very small level and I think was approaching a tipping point. And now there's a real danger of it going into reverse. And instead, countries like China, which take a much longer view and don't have the, the need to cater to their domestic population in the way that American politics seems to, they are going to be the dominant power in Africa unless America now takes seriously the idea that investing in the outside world is actually in its national interest. Um, you know, I, at Davos this year, we had a panel discussion around philanthropic capitalism, and one of the speakers was Jet Li, the film star in China. And I initially was, you know, I didn't know what he was going to have to say. But it turns out... Um, but he, he didn't beat you up. No, so. it turns out he, he nearly drowned in the tsunami. His daughter was swept away and fortunately rescued. He, had to, he realized the time had come to give back. He spent two years studying the American model of philanthropy, um, talking to firms like McKinsey, and has built a state-of-the-art philanthropy organization in China uh, using the internet and mobile, mobile phones. He has a million Chinese people giving a one a month um, to support nonprofits in China, and the Chinese government was supportive of that initiative. You know, this is an idea that America has led the way in and was and has been taking off in all sorts of parts of the world that need that kind of civic engagement. But the danger is now that America focuses in on itself and walks away from um, these great opportunities in the outside world to show leadership just at the moment when actually it, it, it was beginning to win. And so you know, I, I think it's tragic that the one thing Joe Biden mentioned in the presidential debate that might be an area for cuts was... Um, was the aid budget. I mean, I think that, that would be catastrophic short-sightedness, but it looks like it's in danger of, of happening. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Andrew, I want you to respond to one, one assertion that Matthew made, which is that globalization might be in reverse. Do you think that's true or not? And the, the follow-up to that is, in your previous remarks, you spoke focused heavily on the, the potential for overregulation and the narrow focus on compensation sorts of issues. Look beyond that for us, and what is going to be the new uh, Wall Street model? How can it lead in areas where the government may be falling behind in order to restore that American presence and, in a way, compete to do good in the world against others, as Matthew mentioned? Right. Well, let me, let me take the second part first and, and elaborate on what I was trying to say, because the comp thing I think I, I didn't articulate properly, which is part of what is going to happen to Wall Street is that when I said the goal was to make money, unfortunately, over the past 10 or 20 years, the goal became about how many fees you could generate and how much you could lever things up, instead of the goal being how can I serve my client and how can I help them grow their business. 
And that is actually, it, it's, a, it's, a mind, it's a mind game, it's a mind shift, and that's what's actually going to change, I think, more than anything else, because you're actually going to see Wall Street, I think, if this actually works out the way it should, really sort of shift in terms of what their goals and priorities become. And that's sort of the cultural shift uh, that's going to happen. In terms of the actual breakdown, in terms of what Wall Street looks like, um, I do think that there's going to be uh, hedge funds and private equity firms and things of that sort on one side, and banks on the other. I think you almost have a sort of uh, Glass-Steagall um, without, without the regulation. I think people are, will actually divide almost on their own um, at, at some level. Some of the banks will do other things. Um, and, and banks will be, and traditional banks will probably have a tough time uh, in terms of the regulation that's on them, making enormous amounts of money uh, through trading and things of that sort. And a lot of the profits, by the way, that we're currently seeing now are coming from trading, so it's unclear how, how this is uh, going to be sustainable in the long term, depending on what that regulation looks like. Um, but you know, the larger issue is when you think about Wall Street, not just in the United States, but its role in uh, Europe and Asia and, and elsewhere, is really the risk question, which is where, you know, does a traditional bank play the role of, of almost venture capitalist, which they, which they had been playing over the past a couple of years or not? I think there is going to be this sort of shadow banking system that will continue in its own way. It will not be able to get as big as it probably wants to get, but that's where you're going to actually be seeing people make the sizable bets. I actually think the traditional banks in the end are going to go back to doing what they used to do, which is be uh, very risk averse, um, and that is uh, both good and bad.